Hey everybody, my name is Dan, I'm a veterinarian, and today we're going to go over ACL tears in the doggy. I'm going to go over the pet owner sees at home regarding an ACL tear, what I do as a veterinarian to diagnose it, and what we can do long term either surgically or medically to manage an ACL. A lot of pet owners will come in and they'll be like, Dr. Dan, we didn't do anything, it's just, we just started limping. What the pet owner will see is there may be no incident. Literally, the dog's outside having a great time, just walking around, all of a sudden, we're limping. The limping in an ACL dog usually is toe touching. They will put the foot down and then pick it right back up again. They'll put a little bit of weight on it. They're not three-legging it, and they're, they're, they are definitely babying it when they're being really active. They tend to use it, but it's toe touching. That's the key phrase. They'll put it down and then lift it up a little bit. It will hover because the ACL, which helps prevent the tibia from sliding forward, is torn. A lot of pet owners will come in and they believe there's something in the paw pad or the toes hurt because the toes will touch and then come back up again. And it's because the pressure of the leg is making the knee slide, not because there's something in the toe. When the pet owner rolls in the veterinary office, the first thing I do as a veterinarian is I just watch the doggy. I'll watch him walk around the room. I take him for a little walk myself. And I confirm again that we are toe touching and how we place our leg. The next thing I do is I do my thorough physical. And after my physical, if I really believe it's an ACL based on what the pet owner tells me and what I see on my lameness exam, I do like to sedate the dog. This is something I do because when the muscles are all tight and, and they don't want to move much, I want to sedate the dog to get my diagnosis. The best way to diagnose an ACL tear is with a cranial drawer test. The cranial drawer test is when a veterinarian grabs the knee and slides it a little bit. And if the knee or the tibia slides forward, that's a diagnosis of an ACL tear. You want to get x-rays, of course, but that test alone tells me the ACL has been compromised or torn and needs to be fixed. Now, I sedate them because when they're relaxed, there's no more tight muscles and the dog's not painful. So when they're napping, I can easily move the leg back and forth. I can check both sides, compare both sides, and get a really good idea of how serious everything is. When the dog is sleeping, I'll get an x-ray too. The x-ray is my way of confirming that the hips look good, that there's nothing broken, and I can see if there's any fluid collection or effusion in the knee. I'll take pictures of both knees and the hips, and if I feel like there's a problem with the foot, I'll get a picture of that too. This is my way of confirming nothing else is going on, and my cranial drawer diagnosed the ACL, and if there's fluid in the joint, I feel even more confident with my diagnosis. As always, if your doggy is sick, please go see your local veterinarian. These videos are for entertainment and educational purposes only. The next step is how we're going to treat this. The best option is surgery. I'm sorry to tell you that. Surgery can be scary and surgery can be expensive. If a pet owner doesn't do surgery, the joint is unstable and you're more likely to get inflammation and degenerative joint disease or arthritis. Any unstable joint can be compromised over the years. So surgery is the best option because it's gonna stabilize the joint and make the joint usable long-term. There's a couple options, and the most common ones that you're going to hear about is the extracapsular or the TPLO. The extracapsular is a process of putting an implant in where we loop a big implant around the bone and then through the tibia and we cinch it down. By doing that, it prevents the tibia from sliding forward anymore and it stabilizes it. This can only be done on small dogs. Because the big dogs, if they walk around and play, can break that implant and then you're back to square zero again. Or square one, whatever you want to call it. The ACL is torn again. For big dogs, the TPLO is a great option. The veterinarian is going to surgically use some physics to level out the tibia. That way it doesn't slide anymore. For these procedures, you may have to go see a specialist if your veterinarian does not offer it for you. Yes, there are surgeons that do orthopedic work on dogs, and that's all they do, and they're really good. 
They go through residency and they're specialized. So I highly encourage that all my pet owners at least consult or go see a specialist to have the TPLO or the extracapular procedure done to fix their dog's knee. Once surgery is done, a veterinarian will put a doggy on an anti-inflammatory or a joint supplement until the leg has healed. Once the leg is healed, a lot of dogs don't need a whole bunch long term. Now, joint supplements are always a good idea, but anti-inflammatories, if the surgery is a success, the doggy may not need them long term. I hope this was super helpful information regarding torn ACLs. If you have any questions, concerns, or want to comment on your own experience, please comment below.